Alright, this is Carl Rutfalk again, and this time we will talk about higher ISO files and what you can do with them to make them look good. Okay, so Lars Madsen, one of my friends, uh, is a photographer in the States, and he sent me some pictures from some horse thing that he had going, and he wanted me to take a look at those. So, we have here one shot that I want to show you, first of all. I'll bring this one down, I'll take this one away, actually. It's easier later. Hmm? And uh, you see here now, this is an ISO 1600 shot, taken with a 70 to 200 lens. And, uh, well, the first thing we can do is to see that it's sunlight. We can see what happens if we bring a more correct white balance. Uh, it will probably make it more yellow. And then we start with the pimpette to see if perhaps it's a possibility to get any good colors. Ah, I think this is pretty nice colors, but Still, there's not much light in her face, and the whole picture sort of begs me like, please make me black and white. Something you should know is that higher ISO files and the Sigma goes like this together. It works brilliantly. You can go very, very high, so long above 3200 ISO, and make very, very beautiful black and whites. So let's do that with this one. You see the white balance here? Yes, click and move down, and you see monochrome. Ta-ta! This is not just normal black and white, this is a special thing. Uh, let's see where the grey is. Hmm? Is this grey? The thing is, I don't really know where the center is. Or maybe that's center, but the picture is off. <laughs> hmm, that's what it is like to be first. Hmm? Okay. So, what we need to do now is to see what we can do to make this picture better. You can see we make it slightly brighter so that we can see the rider very nicely. You can see the light here on her chest. I can also bring a little bit of shadow information here so you see everything. And I'll bring some shadow too, actually, to make her look nice. And I like less luminous noise because I like it noisy. I mean, noise can be nice. All right, so this is nice. And the chroma noise has really nothing to do but with what we do because we have no color so I'll bring it to the bottom because I want less of that okay so we have now a picture that appears to be pretty nice but you see the outdoor that part could be saved too so what we will do now is save as two shots one bright this is the bright one and this is Tiff now and we put it on the desk and then we will make a dark one so that the background the outdoor will be seen like that. Alright, we save this as the dark one. And then we bring those two together inside Photoshop. And we take one of them, for example the bright one, and put it above the dark one, like this. We drag them so they are on top of each other. Then we just take the rubber or eraser tool make sure that we have a big one and no hard corners and we put opacity to something in between like that and then we start to make ourselves a nice background like that brilliant then of course you can add a little bit of canvas and all that and then you send it back to Lawrence and he will be like oh Carl you're so good I know okay and this is what I ended up with before you see, it looks pretty good. Not too bad. Okay, so. Then we have another horse picture. And this time, uh, I want to do something with it and keep the colors. And uh, we can start off by trying to find a good spot for the white balance. And still something here. I guess this is a good starting point. Or perhaps here it should be white. No, 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 this is a little bit too much. Hmm? Something like this. And here is really just to fool around to see what happens. The chroma noise here, you can actually bring it down a bit. It will bring more of that green noise because uh, the chroma will enhance the real colors. Uh, but also the colors that is not really real, the noise, will also become stronger. So you need to find a middle way here. And it all depends on what kind of scene you are working with. In this case, Mm, I think it will bring more. 
yeah, it looks decent, it looks good. So you can also try to add a little bit of that fill light, but fill light is a little bit like the exposure slide, it will bring more noise, so you will actually uh, add ISO to the picture more or less. So instead of a 1600 picture, it will become like shadows from uh, ISO 2000 or 3000 or something. And we can bring down and play a little bit. So, uh, just feel free, and if you're not satisfied with the pictures, uh, with the color, you can actually go down the saturation. In this case, you can never even play like this. You know, it looks black and white, right? But look what happens here. You can move around with this slider, and uh, that way, uh, change this, uh, the gray balance to follow the color. So it's almost like having an old type of camera with a color filter above in, in the front of the lens. And uh, So now, for example, I think this looks much, much better. Got a lot of yellow color here. But of course, it still looks black and white. Yeah, this looks really nice. So maybe Lawrence, he wants it in color, but... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, can you see here this? Yeah, it's really nice. I like it. All right, so let's save that. Send it back to the same. Oh, become black and white. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this last one here, this is an ISO 3200 shot, taken with a 50 to 500 from a 450 millimeter distance. Hmm, that's long. Hmm, I made this, yeah, it takes the settings from the last one and see here what we can do. Oh, that looks much better. Okay, so let's see here. This is an overcast situation, I think, or maybe it's shade. Let's try those settings. And something that you should be aware of that uh, these raw files they contain so much information. You see here, it looks like it's pretty empty, but bring down the exposure, you will see that there is a lot of information in the correct redness down there. But then the picture becomes a little bit too dark, right? So we will try to make it as bright as possible without sacrificing all the details. So in this case, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And also, this is not very kind of Lawrence to send me a picture like this because you know it's not very easy for me to know what is gray. I have nothing to go from. Perhaps this here will be gray. Well, maybe that was a good spot. Yeah, it looks much, much better. So, actually, here we might want to have more chroma because all the colors is sort of in one place. So, the chroma noise could be fairly high without sacrificing detail. And luminance, we can go down a little bit because I think it's nice if we can keep more of these uh, sort of dusty feeling here. Oops, now I took. <laughs> I didn't change the white balance by mistake. Yeah, I need to. So, like that. And the red color is very, very nice too. So, this is ISO 3200, and I think this picture looks pretty good now. Okay, so over and out, and uh, take care.